Okay, this is problems involving dry friction. So we've got three types. The first type being there is no apparent impending motion. Basically what that means is where the unknowns for a problem are equal to the equations of equilibrium. And I'm going to just call this EOE from now from now on a shorthand. Okay, so say I had a surface and then had a pin connection right at that top, B, then I had another surface down here, C, and A over here. And say that I was knew that the weight of each of these bars was equal to 100 newtons. So if I were to draw this free body diagram, say I was also given that the um, coefficient of friction on the alpha surface, the A surface, was 0 0.3, and on the C surface was 0 0.5. So let's say I got my weight down here. And then I would have my normal force. And then I would have my frictional force right here. And then my pinned connection, Bx and By. And I could do the same thing over here. Had my opposite, By, Bx, my weight. FC and NC. So my unknowns, I've got FA, NA, BX, BY, FC, NC. So I have six unknowns. But I've got two separate free body diagrams that each have three equations of motions. So I have six equations of motion, sorry, not of motion, of equilibrium. So six equations of equilibrium and six unknowns. So I don't need to use F equals mu N. So instead though, I need to ensure after I've determined what all of these are, I need to ensure that FA is less than or equal to mu A times NA. And FC is less than or equal to mu C times NC. Because if they're not less than or equal to, then there was motion. Um, because if, it, if um, those are greater, then that means that this had moved, and then you can't use the equations of equilibrium. So Our next type is impending motion at all points of contact. And this is when your unknowns equal the equations of equilibrium that you have and your frictional equations. Which are your F is equal to mu N. So if I had a surface like this. Let's say I had a ladder sitting like this at some angle theta, point A, point B. I know that mu B is equal to 0 0.4 and mu A is equal to 0 0.3. So if I were to draw my free body diagram, 
I would look at this and if this were to move, it's going to move like this, right? It's going to slide down the wall. So that means I, my frictional force has to oppose it up here. And my frictional force down here has to oppose it like this. Then I'd have my normal forces. Angle theta. Then I'd have my weight. Okay, so in this, we've got NB, FB, theta, FA, and NA. So that's one, two, three, four, five unknowns. And we can have three equations of equilibrium for this free body diagram. And then we can have two more um, equations from our frictional equations, right? We can have FA is equal to mu A N, and we can have FB is equal to mu B N B. And so using all of those equations, we can solve. So our third type is the impending motion at some points of contact. And this is when your unknowns are less than your equations of equilibrium and your frictional equations. So let's say we had that first problem over again. But this time, we have a horizontal force, P. Mu A is equal to 0 0.3, and mu C is equal to 0 0.5. A, B, C. So now when I draw my free body diagram, I have from A to B, I've got NA and FA. And BX, BY, 100 newtons, on this side I'd have BY, BX, then I have my horizontal force P, and my 100 newtons. Then I would oppose the motion, FC and then NC. So now when I look at this, let's write out my unknowns. I don't know BY, BX, P, FC, NC, FA, or NA. So I've got a total of seven unknowns. But then for my equations, I have six equations of equilibrium and I have two frictional equations. So, to solve this type of problem, you need to utilize FA is equal to mu A N A and our six equations of equilibrium to solve for FC. Well, to solve for everything. But then, at the end, you want to check and ensure that FC is less than or equal to mu C N C. And this will give you PA. So we're going to find PA using this. Then we have to check the other side. So we would utilize FC is equal to mu C, NC, and our six equations of equilibrium. And then we need to check in this case that FA is less than or equal to mu A NA and this gives us PC 
then our final p-value would be equal to the lesser of pa or pc. So basically what we did, we solved it two different ways. In this way, we're saying that a slips first, right? Because it's going to overcome it, overcome the slipping, and this is still going to be less. But then in this case, we said that c slips first. And we check to make sure that fa didn't slip. And then we look at these two numbers and we compare them. If pa is less than pc, then a did indeed slip first. But if pc is less than pa, then c slipped first. And so um, in some of these problems, when you have impending motions at some points of contact, you're going to have to solve the problem multiple times and then determine which one is the least, um, which one is going to um, need the least amount of force. And then in some odd cases, PA will equal PC, and then the slipping at both points occurs at the same, at the same time. And one thing to note for all of this, when you are using the frictional equations, so when using frictional equations, aka f is equal to mu n, the sense of f must be correct. The problem's not going to work out if you said that um, the motion was going to be this way, and so your frictional force was, okay, sorry, motion's this way, frictional force is opposing it, but say you accidentally messed up and wrote that F was going the same way as the motion, then your problem's just going to be wrong. So that's something you need to be really careful with. So let's go over the procedure for these. Okay, the first thing is your free body diagram. So you want to draw your free body diagram and show your frictional forces. However, do not assume that F is equal to mu n. Next, determine the number of unknowns. And compare that to the equations of equilibrium. And then if the number of unknowns is greater than the equations of equilibrium, then apply the frictional equations at some, if not all, points of contact. Like I said earlier, if you're using F equals mu n, then F needs to be shown in the correct sense on the free body diagram.
And then finally, you're going to use your equations of equilibrium and your friction to solve for the unknowns. And if you're ever given a 3D problem, make sure to use Cartesian vectors to solve. It will make it way simpler.